Okay, so this is a ship in a current problem from the exam. And this is very similar to the kayaker problem from the practice exam, but uh, a ship instead of something else. Now, because I've called it a ship, I think uh, some folks are inclined to bring in some of their knowledge from navigation, start trying to complicate the situation a little bit. And indeed, if you were in this situation on the water, uh, you probably wouldn't know the exact information that we've had here, and so things would be trickier because you need to sort out what the drift was and all of that kind of thing. But uh, here we have all the necessary information that we need. It says a ship's instruments indicates that, uh, I should say indicate, typo, uh, that its velocity relative to the water is 4 meters per second at 90 degrees. Okay, so in our standard units here, that's going to be something like this, okay, at 90 degrees. So, and that is the velocity of the ship relative to the water. So V sub S W is what I'll call that. And V sub S W is in that direction at four meters per second. <clears throat> I suppose we could do something like that to be complete. Okay, but it's there in the diagram. And then uh, if it is determined that the water is moving at two meters per second at 180 degrees relative to the earth. So that's this, okay. So water relative to the earth is two meters per second at 180 degrees. What is the true velocity of the ship, i.e. its velocity relative to the Earth? Okay, so V, ship relative to Earth, V sub S E. What is that? Okay, well, we can look at our relative velocity equation. You may already have an intuition about how this should go, but this will confirm it, hopefully. And you set it up this way, again, sandwiching the thing that doesn't appear over here, the water and the S goes in the first position like it does on the left, and the E goes in the second position like it does on the left. Now that we have this, we know that graphically it's gonna be, we can do the head to tail thing, so we move the other one up to here, and so that's V, W, E, and then the thing that we're trying to find is just going to connect the origin to the head of that vector, something like that. And so we have velocity of the ship, relative to the Earth is what that looks like, and just remains for us to calculate that. And we can skip right through all of the initial steps of 2D vector addition, finding components and whatnot, because these things are already on the y-axis and the x-axis, respectively, right? That's the x-axis, that's the y-axis. So we can just skip to the part where we say, all right, well, the magnitude of this thing is going to be the sum of all the y components, which in this case is just four meters per second, and the sum of all the x components, which is in this case just going to be two meters per second. It'll be negative, but when we square it, it doesn't really matter. And we'll get the square root of 20, which is about four and a half meters per second at um, how many degrees? Well, if you plug all of that in, you should get about, or exactly, 120 degrees. Where that comes from is if you take and look at this angle right here, for example, that phi is going to be the inverse tangent of two over four, opposite over adjacent. And that will give you 30 degrees. And then you just add 90 to it if you want to get it in terms of the standard way of representing it, okay? If you draw a nice picture and you give this and you label it this way, then I don't have a problem, okay? But uh, if you're putting it in standard notation, then that's what you get. All right, so that's that.